Because for our women to respect us again, let, let, let's understand something. The contempt that the black woman has for the black man, Nick, to some extent, it is, it is, it is it's justified. It's justified. Why is that? Because when she look at other women, she see that their men can do things for them that we can't do for them. Mm. Don't get me wrong. That's not all our fault. We didn't ask to be here. None of the institutions that oppress black men are ruled by black men. We don't rule the prison system. We don't rule the school system. We don't rule the economic system. So it's not all our fault. Right. But I understand where the sister is coming from. And if we want to change the way our women value us, then we're going to have to economically empower ourselves so they can come to us with our needs. And we can say, sister, I got you. Right. We got to be able to walk into these department stores and fast food restaurants where we see black women being disrespected daily right. by Anglo-Saxons to Arabs and say, sister, you don't need this. Come on. I got a job for you. And not only take her to the job, but not try to get any shooky nooky on the way to the job. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right, so right. we can fix. Let me give you this point. You know why nobody really feels sorry for black America? Despite everything we go through. Mm. The Trayvons and the Sandra Blands and the jail and the schools. We're the only African population on the planet, Nick. On the planet that can solve their problems themselves. No other African population can solve their problems themselves. With the exception of maybe Canada or the United Kingdom. Right. But most African communities are dependent to some degree on the government for intervention. Not us. We are two trillion dollar people. Mm. Not us. What's going to happen next Friday? The What's going to happen next Friday in America? It's Black Friday. <laughs> yeah. And, and guess what Negro's going to do? Shop. In Philadelphia, we're going to spend three billion dollars. Listen to this. I didn't say million. Mm. I said ba 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 billion. Right. In Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the fifth or sixth largest city in America, we're going to spend $3 billion on Christmas. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. If Philadelphia has a population of 1.5 million, uh -huh. half of that is black, so we're about 750,000. Right. And if we're going to spend $3 billion in Philly, being a population of 750,000, could you imagine what the New York City black Christmas bill is going to be? Yeah. Can you imagine what the Chicago black LA, Christmas bill? Yeah. Can you imagine LA and Atlanta? Houston <laughs> right here in D? Do you understand me? <laughs> yeah. So how are you going to cry about not having good schools, poor health care, no jobs, no banks, no supermarkets, no factories. It's when us. you're wasting billions of dollars on garbage. Oh, man, we got it. Do you see? So you can take the slave out of slavery all day long. But until the slave takes the slavery out of himself, he will never be free. Mm. It must be a psychological revolution, Nick, before any other revolution. If you don't change the way we think about ourselves, our future and our oppressor, nothing changes. The mind is the first place to make the change. What did Dr. Carter G. Woodson say in Miseducation of the Negro? He said, if you control, control a man's, man's thinking, thinking, you don't have to worry about his actions. If you bring him to the house, you don't even have to tell him to go to the back. He'll go he on his, his own. own. And when he get to the back, if there is no door, he will make the door and walk out of it. Yeah. That is how Dr. Woodson also said it took him 20 years to undo the menticide that Harvard University put inside of him. Mm. The most honorable Marcus Garvey said, don't take the kinks out of your hair. Take the kinks out of your mind. So I'm saying we have to have a psychological revolution before we have an economic revolution, spiritual revolution, political revolution, social revolution. Change the African mind. Tear it down and build it up. And that's what we're going to do with FDMG.